Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today's talk is going to be about open source COVID contact tracing apps to improve transparency and adoption. And I don't want to make you wait anymore, so let's start right now, okay? Uh, first of all, let's give a little bit of context. So during uh, these last months, we have seen huge improvements in different areas of uh, to fight COVID, not only uh, related with uh, uh, the development and launch of open source contact tracing apps, but also related with test methods, best practices to fight COVID, to, well, to reduce infection, vaccines, and, and so on, right? And it's amazing all the improvements we are we are right now seeing at this moment. But today I'm here to talk about open source and how open source is helping to fight COVID through COVID tracing apps and how these can help to improve transparency. So just a reminder of all the attendees that are joining me right now, this talk is not going to be about code analysis and it's not going to be about privacy issues or neither a currency test. And just to make sure, um, I'm going to focus on software development activity and try to analyze patterns within software development activity in public entities. So the open source code of those apps only and why are we focusing uh this analysis in the in, in in this framework well um i'm from viteria and in viteria one of the things we are doing is software development analytics and try to analyze software development activity of open source projects and just to tell you a little bit of myself. I'm Ana Jimenez, and as I said, I'm working at Viteria as a software marketer, but also I'm finishing my uh, master's degree in data science um, and, and also open source advocate. So as you can see, it's like a mix of everything. <laughs> so I always tend to say that I'm, I'm most like a hybrid with cross domain superhero powers. <laughs> uh, so I was saying in Viteria, we, we are uh, used to do this type of analysis. And in fact, this talk was, had some motivation, some inspiration uh, from all the Viterians that were analyzing this, these apps as well. So uh, we can find uh, Marike. Marike analyzed, I think it was last month, uh, he um, published a blog post in opensource.com analyzing the Corona Warns app uh, development. And it's the, the German, uh, the official German uh, contact tracing app. And on the other hand, uh, Jesus, that it's also another Vitorian, uh, published a list of free open source software for COVID contact tracing with a lot of useful information, not only European uh, content tracing apps that, by the way, um, this talk is, is mainly is focused on European contact tracing apps, but he, he published a list and some analysis from uh, all the contact tracing apps such as um, it was from apps from Canada, apps from Israel, Estonia, Italy, Portugal, Australia, India, and so on. So uh, I will publish these slides later on and you can go and check uh, the different URLs. Uh, there's something in common uh, between Jesus, um, Marike, and I. So we are using, we have been using Cauldron, this technology to analyze all the different open source projects. So Cauldron.io, it's a free open source platform. It's mainly made for analyst developers and managers. And it helps to understand the community and processes involved in software development. 
and it's also built on top of Gremlin Lab. Uh, Gremlin Lab it's a is this software used by Chaos Project that is part of the Linux Foundation um, projects. So just in case some of you are wondering how do we get this data from, I want to show you a quick demo of how easy like is to do the same analysis I'm doing right now or I'm gonna perform right now, okay? So this is Cauldron. Um I just use I just went to radar COVID GitHub because I'm gonna analyze uh, GitHub and Git data. And it's just copying this um, the URL, create a new project, go to add data sources. Well Caldron also supports Meetup and GitLab by the way. I'm just gonna focus on GitHub because the apps are uh, being developed in GitHub. So if you go to GitHub and you copy and paste, you click add. And um, if you wait for a while, you will start seeing all the data. So well, rather COVID, for those who doesn't know, it's the Spanish, the official Spanish app and it started it, it was launched in september so it, it it really doesn't have a lot of history so i'm just gonna go to the time picker and go to september okay so here you can start seeing the data and you can see uh you have pretty fine metrics so related with Comments, issues, and reviews. Reviews are pull requests. Um, in terms of activity, and then in terms of community, right? So, and also, if you want to uh, go deeper or create your own visualizations, you can go to um, Data Workspace, or more details. Both of them will drop you to um, Elasticsearch to Kibana. So that's where we are making the customized visualizations. And here you can buy, you, you can build your own, okay? So that's, that's how easy it is. That's the process I have been following and on all the analysis I've made. Okay, so coming back to the slides, um, I know, I know there are a lot of tracing apps in in Europe, not the European Union, just to make sure just Europe area. Um, but I focus mainly on this bunch of tracing apps. So I, I will be analyzing UK, Italy, Germany, Portugal, Netherlands, Ireland and Spain. I know France have one. I know um, yeah, France have one and it's not here. Switzerland it's also have one, does also have one. But well, um, I don't want to make this, um, this talk never ending talk, a never ending talk. So that's why I, I had to choose. Okay, and I'm really happy to share with you um, once this talk ends, uh, more details about, sorry, about other apps. But for right now, let's just focus on this one. So these are the names of the tracing apps. And then also it's important to know that all these tracing apps have uh, different, different um, times when they were released, when they were actually launched into open source. So as as I was saying, Radar COVID was released in September. It's, it's a really early, um, really um, new open source app. Uh, but then you can find all the apps that are running since March, since Inmuni or NHS COVID-19 from UK. Just uh, to let you know that, of course, the analysis will change in between apps because I will be having different time pickers when showing the, the visualizations. So, 
in order to, to start the analysis, my goal here was to try to identify patterns, try to identify activity patterns. So for that, I make some questions, uh, questions such as, is there a community around these projects? Or um, how is the evolution of active developers? How responsive is the community? How is the onboarding of those developers? or uh, when, where do developers work. So let's go step by step. Uh, I'm not showing the whole analysis here. I'm just trying to get some in some of the insights that I found interesting, okay? So the first interesting thing I found out was about the development of some of these open source uh, apps. Um, so, for that, I, I think this visualization is, is really interesting and, and really visual because you can see the lines added and the lines removed over a period of time from comics. So even though Radar COVID has been, uh, has been posting um, several comments from September, all along September, you can see that the main, um, the main launch has been the main release sorry has been right just in one day like the first day because the, the rest of the days were almost nothing and not, not only this not only happened for radar COVID in spain but also happened for COVID tracker that it's uh the iris um the iris um official app so you can see it was only one big pick of lines added, one comment, and that's all. And this means they can, this can tell us that uh, these apps have been working on private repos first, and then open source everything using a single comment. And okay, and what does that mean in terms of transparency? You will say, okay, so. There is, that means that there is no git history available and that means that tr probably the transparency is not the best one, it's a low level of transparency. Uh, fortunately, uh, this is not a trend, uh, so you can see that other apps had um, more activity and they were having other major releases, for instance, Corona Warm app Germany. Uh, that is the, from all this list of apps, the one that has more activity overall uh, in, in Git, um, you can see that they had been added a lot of lines, um, not only one pick, but they have three uh, major picks in Muni, Italy, Corona Mildred from Netherlands, Stay Away COVID, also three mayor picks, and NHS COVID 19, sorry for this, it's 1909, <laughs> and UK. So let's move now to into the onboarding analysis. So this was related with how well uh, did this, those apps onboard developers and the evolution of developer onboarding over a period of time, right? So for this, we need to analyze Git. And to explain this, I'm gonna show you this visualization, also available in Cauldron. Um, so here you can see two, uh, two sections. The first section, the, the, blue, the dark blue, so it's when people made their first commits. So the evolution of those people, the newcomers. And then the lightest blue uh, is the people that made their last comment. Look, so it's when people made their last comment, contributors leaving. And this is an example from Radar COVID, uh, this Spanish official app. And you can see that initially uh, they had a lot of newcomers, of course, uh, but then they, they, they are losing it somehow. Um, nonetheless, I, I need to, I have to say that these apps was 
open source in September. So it's a really early stage uh, app. So let's see how it evolves. Um, the, the other apps, uh, they're they are not following the same patterns. So for instance, Corona War app, the, for me it's like, and from all this list, the, the most advanced one in terms of open source activity. And you can see here that um, they started to have uh, a, a, a big level of onboarding, then they reduce it. But now they are starting to, to gain uh, new commerce again, right? In Muni Italy, it seems like when they make the big release, okay, it seems like they had a lot of onboarding, but then it's almost zero and, and they're uh, progressively losing um, newcomers. Uh, Netherlands, it seems now they're losing a little bit, but it, it, it remains more or less stable. And this is an interesting case. It's uh, Ireland, okay? So here, this is the uh, Git, uh, the the Git commits they made over a period of time. As, as you can see, there is not a lot of um, commits. Like they, they, it seems like they just have been like, okay, I, I made a bunch of com of commits here, a bunch of commit uh, in the middle of uh, August, and then now a little bit, but you cannot see an evolution and actually constant git um, contributions to, to the app, right? And you can see like they began to have um, newcomers, but now they, they, they're totally losing them. And more apps, stay with COVID Portugal. Oh, uh, NS, NHS COVID from UK, it's an interesting case. Because here you can see that you can see that at some point, they they didn't uh, have newcomers at all, so they they completely lose lose not newcomers, and now they're somehow um, increasing a little bit. So let's see how it goes. So moving now to community response analysis, here I will try to focus on uh, see the the median time duration of reviews. So our pull request and issues, and try to see how how the how is the community response among the different apps. So the first scenario it's uh, from COVID tracker in Ireland. As I was as I mentioned earlier, um, I saw that COVID tracker is mainly based on just um, doing releases and that's all, not creating a community. And here we can see it, it's a clear example because when I went to uh, analyze the median time to close issues or the median review duration from pull request, I just found that they, they didn't even made any issue at all uh, since June, that is when, uh, July, sorry, that is when this app was released as open source. So this is telling us that they are not they are just focused on releasing code, but there is no community involved actually. Uh, we can see other um, other scenarios in Mini Italy. I'm just gonna skip this a little bit uh, because we don't have too much time. Uh, so here you can see uh, the medium time to close from the different um, tracing apps. The medium time to close and uh, for issues created, right? And the median review duration of, of the pull requests. Just, so let's go a little bit faster. Okay, now, uh, how, how the working hours is behaving in the community and how, how, the, how is the diversity in terms of organizations? So here we can see two kinds of, of behaviors, right? So we have, for instance, Corona One app in Muni, in Muni from Italy and the one of Netherlands that, uh, of course, during weekdays, you can see that they, they are doing most of the activity, but they are also working on Saturday and Sunday. 
So that's, in terms of community, this is telling us that they might be companies involved, of course, but there are also individuals working that they might not be uh, from companies. Or maybe they're uh, being burned out, that there are uh, people from companies that they had to work also during uh, weekends. <laughs> Who knows? It can, it can tell us uh, burnouts, like developer burnouts, people that they weren't supposed to be working on Saturday and Sunday and they are doing so. Or they can be individuals that are contributing to code during weekends, right? Like open source enthusiasts and so on. And then on the other hand, we have a different uh, scenario. Um, well, for instance, in rather COVID or stay away COVID from Portugal, it's it's clear they're working during uh, weekdays and, and office hours. And there is no activity, well, just a little bit here, but almost no activity during weekends. So this is, this might tell us that uh, is really, really focused. There are only organizations involved, developers from organizations involved in, in this development. So um, I also check out the email domains uh, from the different apps. I'm just gonna um, focus, uh, I'm just gonna show you rather COVID and the next one is gonna be uh, Corona War app from Germany. Because I think it's, you can see the, the both alternatives, right? So in Spain, um, the official company that is making the development of, of this app, even though it's open source, uh, it's Indra, it's a tech Spanish company. And as you can say, as you can see, uh, the second uh, domain, um, email domain, uh, that has most activity on Gate is Indra. And then Minsight, it's also from Indra, so it's Indra as well. And, and you can see that the companies or the emails domains that are making the most contributions for this project are Indra itself. But then on the other hand, when you check um, Corona Warn app development, of course, the official organization involved in, in this development was SAP, and, and you can see it here, right? But you can see that most of the activity of the gate contributions is not SAP. Others is just because there are more emails domains. So you can see how diverse is Corona Warm App right now uh, in terms of contributions right so it's you can clearly see um, the different the different behaviors right in in, in Spain there are mainly um, a single organization making um, commits making contributions and corona warm up there are several people contributing from different organizations or from different projects and so on. So just to end up with this talk, some highlights. So the first important thing I would like to, to remind is that transparency is important in order to build a sense of fair place, first for the contributors that wants to contribute to the project, and then it can build a sense of trust among third parties. And then on the other hand, transparency can help to encourage uh, national tech companies to get involved in the development of the app. And with this, I mean that if I've been in charge of developing an app, I'm Indra, for instance, in, in Spain, right? I'm Indra and I have to do this um, privately, then that's all. I mean, all the companies are not gonna get involved, they're, they're, they're just not gonna care about that. But if we open source this, it means that, okay, Indra is gonna be there, but maybe other companies, other tech companies, or the national tech companies can go there, see the code, if it's transparent enough, and um, 
and provide some feedback and work together to build a better app uh, and a better uh, and develop a better um, thing to fight COVID. And that's all. Just short story about Biteria. Uh, we, as I said, as a software development analytics firm, and understand how the software that matters to people is is being built. And, and yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, there you have my Twitter account in case you want to follow me and ask me any questions you want. And see you soon. Bye.